you know. Well, I mean, on so disrespectful, you're talking a lot about your ex. Right. You're talking a lot about game. Yeah. Throw a little shot at Jay Z too. Well, I explained that he thinks he's too big to respond. So it's not a shot. It's just where he actually is at this point. Well, what about game? Because that's been above ground, shots back and yeah. forth, tons of records. The game situation, I really don't know where the disconnect was or whether there was ever a connection is the question. You, you don't know where the problem really starts? Yeah. See, I worked with Game for six days. Dre worked with him for a year in the studio before they brought him to me for the six days to fix it. Like Joe Beast, like Brooklyn, <laughs> but like see, right, But right there where you said to fix it, so right. you had to fix him. Right. So you can you imagine when he hears that, of course he gonna be like, yo, you fix me? He knows that. It's, it's facts. Like, look, if you go, if you spend a year in, in a studio with a producer like Dr. Dre and you can't deliver a, a full record, something's wrong. Something's broken. In a six day time period, I created the material that was necessary for him to sell all the records and launch his career. Do you actually like his music? He had some hit music on that first album. 50. Helped <laughs> Just him the write first it. album? Yeah. That, not the second album? <laughs> no, not really. But you know, there's points that, there's certain things that you know, I know when he's going to win. I can hear his song and say he's going to win this one. I feel like you spend a lot of time beefing with people who are beneath you. Like you're a heavyweight and you're... you're Fighting lightweights. Yeah. You know, but that's hip hop culture. Like if you're not nah, going to be a part of... supposed to be, you ain't supposed to be a... Te like Jay and Nas were both huge. You know what I mean? You know, uh, mm -hmm. when it was Ice Cube and N.W.A. Right. You know, it's even, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you attacking Rick Ross. And is it me like, attacking Rick Ross or is it Rick Ross attacking me? But why would you even me? respond to a Rick Ross? Why ignore it when I could destroy him and create a, a portfolio of dead bodies but you, that indicate to artists it's not cool to try and compete when you're not ready? Well, you, See, if you got, you can, I could be above the culture and then you'll know what you'll say. Because of my financial success, you'll say, oh, he feels like he's bigger than everything else that's there. And then there's something wrong with that too also, isn't it? Like if, we, if I, if I yeah, walked sure. around and yeah. I felt like I was just better than yeah. the, the actual thing that created me because hip hop is an art form, I haven't lost my interest in, in competing. I think that's what makes the artists better artists. We like you competing. We like the records that you do banging on these guys, mm -hmm. but you haven't destroyed Rick Ross's career. He's put out an album. Rick Ross just People put like out him. Al Listen, he just put, put out, out an album. One? What was Rick Ross' last album? Triple C's. You know how many copies the record sold? No. 4,000 copies. <laughs> what is destroyed? <laughs> Fat Joe's last album. But that's a group album, album. That's not a Rick Ross album. Fat Joe's album. last album sold 8,300 copies. This that's is what happens. That's another damage. one. You punching below your weight. No, no, no. This is me fighting the fighters that are challenging me. Because you went to the gym the first few days and the coach called you champ, don't mean you're ready to fight Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Do you understand? So if, if they come prematurely, they, I'll finish them now before they can get, even get good enough. <laughs> you really, really went at Rick hard. I mean, when you talk about paying the bills for his baby's mother, and you had a sex tape. Did you have a sex tape? With his, with his, not, not you. No. You put out a sex tape with his baby's mother? Isn't he has that? Two, he has two baby's mothers. Yeah. One's a call girl. You can obviously see Rick Ross is an unattractive man. <laughs> You might want to purchase sex. <laughs> this is not 50 Cent making up things. These are facts, people. Shouldn't beef be man to man without bringing in the family? Yeah, well, you family. gotta approach every altercation or situation differently based on who you're competing with and how you assess your opponent. I'm practically the Lord of War as far as hip hop is concerned. <laughs> Do you really? Fear nothing. I'm afraid of turkeys. If you're talking about that, like you're wild, wild turkeys. Wild right turkeys. So, in the fiftieth law, you talk about you fear nothing. But do you really fear nothing? What's left? Look, if I die tomorrow, I've already secured what my son's life is going to be like. Right and my grandparents are better than well taken care of. And those are the people that took care of me when I couldn't take care of myself. Mission accomplished. But you don't fear dying? Not like regular people. What about, say, something like losing your money? 
You afraid of that? No, I'm conscious of it. I got the biggest reminder possible. When I wake up in the morning, I'm in Mike Tyson's house. house. You know, Mike earned five hundred million dollars in his career. You know, so if you not aware or conscious of your finances at that point, then it's just it's all your fault. It was destiny. It's in your cards. What about say like spiders? Afraid of like you mean spider? I'm afraid of turkeys. If you're talking about that, like you're wild wild turkeys, wild they be right outside turkeys? the door. I stomp at them, like move, and they sitting there and they looking. Like, I dare you to come out. <laughs> Wild turkey? Yeah, you they don't, don't even have hands. When you say, you talk about animals like on safari, I look at the history channel, that stuff is reserved for, for white people. <laughs> for crazy white folks that go out there playing with animals and stuff like that. Have you ever had your drug dealing past curtail you or mess you up in business? I haven't had that because the, all the opportunities that I went into were uh, situations that were presented to me. Vitamin Water came to you? No, Vitamin Water was one of the companies that I approached. It was in Why its infancy. I mean, I, between Get Rich, Die Trying, and, and The Massacre, the world touring, had different food standards in different territories right. that I wasn't comfortable with, so I found myself eating more fast food. And you didn't and like And then that. I turned into a blimp. Yeah. And then I went to go shoot the, the cover of The Massacre, and the muscles was gone. So I drew the muscles back on over the picture to excuse myself for not being in shape at that point. That's why those marks were on the actual CD cover. So I was just looking for a substitute for soda, something a bit healthier. At the moment when you learned that this could be a triple digit million score for you, yeah. what was your emotional and physical reaction? It felt really good, but I had developed enough comfort prior to that. But this took you to a whole other level. You know what happens when you get a little bit of money and you classified rich? You run into wealth. And then it make you feel like what you did was cute. <laughs> you need to do something bigger and better than that. Every hip hop fan has in their head the number one MC yeah. of all time. Who is it for you? My highlight reel has records that people probably wouldn't expect. Like what? Like Black Rob Wolf. Like Buster Rhymes, put your hands where my eyes can see. Uh, but the number one MC of all time in your mind is who? Well, one of my favorites is Karis One. I can't front on that. Thanks. We're gonna have the best interview, watch. No doubt. We done, right? That was amazing, people.